Hey y'all, so our chickens have been locked up in the coop for a few weeks now. We had a hawk that was getting them and uh, like picking them off one at a time. So we put them in their coop, they've been in there for a while. They're getting a little stir crazy. And uh, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna put some of our chicken netting out. I'm not sure how well it's gonna work with the layers because they can fly. They may fly over it, I doubt they all will, but some may, we'll find out. But we're gonna let them out today and kinda let them free range a little bit, get some sunlight. So, um, anyway, hopefully they'll start laying. They've been in this coop and it's really dark in there. They don't get much light, so we think that they've, because of the lighting issue, that it's slowed down on their laying, so getting them out should help. So that's our plan for right now. All right, y'all, so this is our massive wad of chicken netting. We brought it from Florida. It's been in the trailer since it's been hauled, you know, hundreds of miles. And I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be tangled pretty good, but hopefully not. But anyway, we're going to show you how to put in chicken netting. So we got to find the end of it here. All right. So the best way we have found to do this is put your two ends together where you want it to start and stop. Because if you don't, you're going to end up pulling posts and moving and moving and moving and moving and moving. So Jack is going that way. They can't see him right now, but he's pulling all the fencing out. And then this is the chicken coop door right here. So we're going to put a post in right here, except for i got to find a place to get it in. Like right there. Like that. And then I've got to go get another end from Jack, and we'll put it on this side of the door. And this is their little chicken ladder. It's kind of old and rotted. It was here already, but it works. So we'll put that there, like so. All right, so we have our start and stop, or our start and stop. It really doesn't matter. It's the two end of the ends of the fence. So once we get our start and stop point, we can come over here and start putting our posts in. And it took us a while to figure out you put your start and stop points in first, because if you don't do that, you end up with a lot of post moving. And there's a rocks, lots of rocks, which is fine. Just gonna get it in the ground. Okay. And this is uh this is actual poultry netting. It's important if you're doing chickens that you have poultry netting. There's a lot of different types of netting out there, uh, sheep netting, goat netting. If if you use sheep netting and goat netting, the chickens can squeeze through the squares. This has really small squares at the bottom that the chickens can't squeeze through. So I don't know if you can see that, how small those little squares are. That keeps them from squeezing through. And we're not gonna put electricity on this because we found our chickens, their feathers don't conduct electricity. So the electricity will keep predators out, but we haven't had any problems with dogs or coyotes or anything like that getting after our chickens. So there's no need to put electricity on it right now at this point. Um, if we have to, we can just run a jumper from the electric fence right down here, but we'll see how it goes. So we're just gonna push our post in. You got that one, Jack? Thing find the soft spot. A lot of rock right under the ground, isn't it? Let me see. It is. So what we've came up with is right here's the perennial garden. And there used to be a building right here where the where the perennial garden is, but it collapsed. Our landlord and them they hauled it off, I'm not sure, it was years ago. This was the entrance to the building. So I'm thinking there's a concrete slab right here, which is, there's nowhere this post will go in. It goes down about four inches and then stops, maybe three. So, but over here it's working. So what we're gonna do is just keep on working our way around like this. Just pushing these little posts into the ground. All right, one thing I wanna be sure to make, you wanna make sure you're pulling as much slack out as you can with this netting, this is not super strong little posts. I mean, they, they're kind of flexible and stuff, so the, uh, we push them in, and then see how it kind of relaxes a little bit. But we gotta make sure it's all the way down on the ground so the chickens won't go under. Because chickens will find a way out. If there's a way, they're gonna find it. And we'll probably have some chickens get out. Not a big deal. And they'll still, most of them will be in here, I think, so. So 
that's pretty much how simple it is. It maybe took five minutes, if that, to put the chicken netting up. So that's how it works. It's very simple. Um, if you have problems like some places where it's really sagging low, you can't seem to get it tight, you can buy the plastic push-in posts. They're like temporary posts for like $2 a piece at Tractor Supply or Rural King. And they work great to just latch in there and shove in the ground to help pick it up. We did that a lot in Florida because the sandy soil, these posts didn't hold very well. They would start to lean. So that helps to put them in between sometimes if you need to, just in, in problem areas. But uh, I think this is gonna work just fine here. So these are the posts I was talking about. Like I said, they're about two bucks a piece. I just thought of a tip that I've learned the hard way about these that I should probably tell y'all. If you install them with all of these latches, these the fence just goes between these. They kind of pry out and it locks in. If you install it with all those facing your fence, you're gonna have a terrible time getting them out every time. But if you turn it around and only latch it in the top, you can put it in the top and then put the post or the spike through the bottom strand and it'll hold it that way you can pull it up here and go to the next one up and that keeps them from getting tangled when you go to tear this fence this netting down you only have one to deal with to unpop just like that pull it up and it's out if it's this way every one of these is more than likely going to have a piece of netting latched in it and it's terrible to try to get it it is time consuming to get it loose that's just a tip i thought about I should probably share with you all. All right, if y'all been watching our YouTube channel and keeping up with us, y'all know that we were gifted a second flock of chickens. Uh, we've kept them separate up until this point. We've got them combined right now. We're gonna let them all out here to free range together. So they should be fine. Um, chickens are pretty quick about setting up their pecking order. Unless one of them is really getting picked on a lot, we'll pull it out and separate it, but they should be okay. So here we go. So we've got a little spot right here where it's kind of gapped open where it's pulling. I'm going to hand Jack this piece of belling, belling rope. We're going to push it like this and pull it tight. There's a board right here. We're just going to wrap it around something simple. Let's go around this one right here, Jack Jack, if you can. Okay. Just pass it back through. There you go. Just going to tie a simple square knot in that. Pull that tight. So with poultry netting, sometimes you've just got to improvise like this, or like I was saying with the little cheap temporary posts. We use those temporary posts for a lot of things. I'm running our temporary electric for our cows when we're doing the rotational grazing. And uh, so they're, you're not just buying them for this. They're gonna be an investment you're gonna use a lot. And uh, so, but this, that should work right there. The chickens are happily foraging. And that's pretty standard for, for hens. They're gonna establish their pecking order. One of these will end up being the, the winner and the other will be the subordinate, I guess. And it looks like the Rhode Island Red may have won. One more thing. If you're doing like a mobile coop, uh, which we're going to do at some point, we just don't have the stuff to build it yet. You can move your coop along and like have it in the center of this you don't have to put your ends meeting up against a solid wall. You can just put the ends straight together and lash them together. There's no problems or issues at all with that. We've done that a bunch in Florida. Um, we just happen to have the stationary coop right here. So we were able to gain another 10 foot of width. 
by just putting it against the wall. So that's what we've done. And you can easily put the poles together, though. There's no issues at all with that. As you can see, they're all happily grazing, foraging whatever chickens do.